In the labs today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this pumpkin pie dish. I've been waiting a long time to make this project. The model for this, the top of this pie dish is actually in the Design and Make library and we're gonna give it away in this project to you for free. But we have some other options in the store already that you could use to modify this design with if you wanted to. Let's pop over to the store and have a look at those other options. So here we are over at Design and Make. Uh, wow, we've got it all set up for a nice fall theme here. It looks very Halloween-y, which is really kind of nice. So let's go, first of all, let's go over and click Go. I'm gonna show you sort of a secret little top tip here about Design and Make. If I go to my search bar, what you're gonna see is that if I type in the word pie, I'm gonna get all kinds of interesting models, but these all start with those three letters, P-I-E, or in a tag for these, Pi is there as well. You can see the models that I want to pop up are there as well, but I wanna get a better subsection of these models. So if I just simply add a space at the end of that, you'll see what happens. It gets automatically updated with just the things that have pie in it. So we've got an apple pie, a berry pie, a pie inside this Thanksgiving number two model project, which is really kind of a nice little model project. And we have the pumpkin top. Now, all three of these are suitable to be used for a pie dish, like I'm gonna show you how to make here in a second. So we have the apple pie, looks really nice. It's got those layered apples in there. Looks really nice. Something like my sister or my grandmother would make for Thanksgiving. There's the berry pie is our next option here. Again, another really nice pie. Reminds me of going berry picking with my grandmother out looking at going through the old thorny bushes and grabbing the raspberries and the, um, picking the blueberries from the field. It's a lovely looking pie model. So you could use that for a top as well if you'd like to. And there's also the pumpkin top. Now this is the top that you're gonna get inside the file that you can download with this project. Now it's important that you remember that it's inside the file. So vCarve Desktop and Pro Users, you won't be able to export this model out of that file. It's actually embedded in the file. Now you'll be able to use the file. You can go ahead and delete everything out of it and then just go ahead and uh, use the, the file as it is and resize it and jig it around. So you'll be able to use this model. It'll still be quite useful for you. If you are an Aspire user, of course you can go ahead and export this out as a 3D clip file. But for all everybody that downloads this, who has a design and make account, this will not be reflected in your design and make purchases or download offerings. So if you go looking for this in the future in amongst your design and make stuff, it's not gonna be there. So just keep in mind, this is a model that we're giving you for free through a Vectric free project, okay? So that's a $10 US dollar model for free just for downloading this project and having a look at it. The tools that I use for this uh, are kind of neat because this file is actually vCarve desktop compatible. So this V3M is already in the file already for you. And I created the bottom part of this with just the molding toolpath, a top and a bottom. So let's go into the software and I'll give you a run through of how I did that. So here we are in vCarve desktop. So we're gonna create a new file. And this is gonna be a double-sided job. And we're gonna make this, uh, so our pie plate is around a nine inch pie plate, I think in the end. And uh, just because I'm not sure all the dimensions right yet of the actual vectors we need, we're gonna go ahead and make this a 12 inch by 12 inch job. Now the thickness of my material, we're over here in the UK, so the material that I have is in millimeters. So the best way to convert it over is just right in the software. So I can go ahead and type in 40 millimeters. And then what I can do is I can multiply that by I, and so the software knows that I'm gonna convert the 40 millimeters into inches, and then I just press equals on my keyboard, and there we have it, so it's 1.5748. Now, if I wanted to go back to millimeters again, I could just go ahead and multiply that by M, and then that will give me the millimeters for that. It's a great tip, and I know a lot of you out there know that already, but um, for those who don't, that is gonna be a time saver for sure. Now, I'm gonna zero off my material surface, my datum in the bottom left, I'm gonna flip bottom to top because later on we are gonna go ahead and import in a 3D model. If you decide to take, or if you're following along with me and you're gonna take this file and actually make it larger so you can put the actual lid on the same sheet, then you're gonna to need to add in some 3D content. So instead of using standard or fastest, we're gonna to go to very high. For this particular part of the demonstration, um, 
we're going to be using the molding toolpath. So that the resolution doesn't matter for that. But just in case you do want to take this a bit further, then uh, we're going to change it to very high right now. And then we can go ahead and choose our material if we'd like to. The countertop that I'm using is um, a piece of dark oak that I salvaged. So um, it's just a, a you know, like a countertop that's been made up of a bunch of little pieces laminated together. So we're going to use that for this project. That's a great reuse of materials. So let's click OK. Now, because I don't know or I don't have on hand an actual pie plate, I had to go online to Amazon and to find a picture of a pie plate that I could use. So I'm going to go ahead and import that in from my desktop. Now I can do that in a couple of different ways. I could just go up to my bitmap import if I want to. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and drag it off of my desktop into the software and pop it in there. Okay, so there we have it. This should give me the dimensions that I need for what I think is kind of a standard pie plate. Of course, if you're going to make this to fit a pie plate, maybe something that's sort of an heirloom, maybe that you use every Thanksgiving or every family meal that you get together, then you're going to need to make some changes. But I'm going to assume that this pie plate is pretty close um, to what I can get around here. Um, or, or what the pre-made pies are I can buy in the shop. I'm not a skilled baker, so there's no way I'm gonna make a pie, but uh, certainly I'll go buy one if I need to. So we're gonna go ahead and use these dimensions. We have the inner diameter, which is perfect. That's the base of the pie plate. We've got the outside diameter, and then we have the depth of it. We're gonna have to guess on the actual lip here, but uh, I think we can do that uh, without too much difficulty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab that bitmap. I'm holding down my Alt key. I'm gonna drag it off of my job for a second. And we're going to go ahead and have a bit of a bit of a think on how we're going to do this. So first of all, I need to make sure that I've scaled up this bitmap so that it's nine inches across from there to there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, draw a circle that's going to be nine inches across. We're just going to click in the middle of my job. Okay, and close that down. And now what I can do is I should be able to just go ahead and drag that back down again. Put it to where it belongs and i'm going to size this plate to be just about the size of that vector that i have there i can use my cursor keys to nudge that into place so that's about right that looks pretty good actually right there um happy with that so now what i can do is i can kind of extrapolate some of the other measurements off of this especially when it comes to this actual width here that i need so my the dish that i'm going to make needs to come up on the side angles like it does and then i need to accommodate a bit of a recess for this top of the pie plate, including a little rolled over um, aluminum edge here. So we're gonna, gonna need to make sure that we keep that all in mind. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take uh, and draw another circle. Now we know the inside of this diameter is gonna be about um, 6.9 inches. Now I'm gonna round those all up to the closest inch. Uh, that, that'll just make, It'll give me a little bit of wiggle room and I'll make sure that it will fit in there happily when I'm all done. So let's grab another circle and we're gonna make this a six inch circle, I think it is. And we'll just pop, the, oh, seven inch circle, sorry. Seven inch of the base. And we're just gonna click again in the middle. And now we've got a seven inch circle, that's perfect. And we can close that down. And let's go ahead now and drag out this bitmap again, pop it up top again. So we can use that in a bit. Now what we want to do is we need to kind of guess what the width of this inside one is. So I'm going to use a guide for that. I'm going to go ahead and go to my pick tool and drag in a guideline. I'll zoom in a little bit here. I'm just going to put it near that edge. That'll give me a good idea of, of the outside edge. That lines up perfect. Drag in another one here and I'm going to drop it right on that edge in the picture. That's great. So now I can just go ahead and grab this circle, hold down my control key. That'll make a copy of it. And I can just go ahead and drag that in. If I hold down my shift key, it'll make it proportional. And I can just kind of drop that in there like that. So that approximately, I think, is the lip of this pie plate. So that's great. Let's get rid of these guidelines. We don't need those anymore. I don't want my bitmap to keep fading out on me. So if I go ahead and select it and I right click on it and I go down to object properties, I can go ahead and turn off that fading. That way it's always going to be obvious to me and I can read everything that I need to. So we have the bottom of our plate. We have this over here. So it's from the center to here. We've got this line here, which is great. And then we have this outside line, which is good too. Now for right now, I think that's all that we need to get going. So we can actually start to think about the um, the profile of this particular side or the inside of our pie plate. So let's just go ahead and draw a quick rectangle. Um, we'll just draw it, it doesn't, well, we, we know the dimensions we need this to be. So we know the width needs to be um, nine, okay? 
because remember I'm round, rounding everything up to the um, uh, around inches and the height of this needs to be um, 1.18 okay so that's for sure because we need to we need to have this proper thickness so we're going to create that I'll just pop it in the middle here for now close that down and I'm going to move this with my cursor keys just out of the way for a second so I can work on it down here so there we have my um, the actual depth of my pie plate now I need to go ahead and draw this in so what I'm going to do just to make my life a bit easier we're going to use some guides again we'll just kind of pop these in they'll snap to my actual plate here and then what I'm also going to do is um, I need a little bit more information here so that I can go ahead and um, draw this properly. I need to know the little bit of a step down that I'm gonna use here for my pie plate. So I'm gonna hold down my Alt key and my Control key. I'm just gonna go ahead and just slide that up to right about there. That seems like a reasonably good depth. I'm not sure what that is, but just visually knowing what a pie plate looks like, I think that would be a little bit of a step from the outside edge going into my ply plate shape and then across the bottom. I think that's going to be all right. So now what we can do is we can draw in a vector for the profile of our actual pie plate. So we're going to click there, there. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go down to here. Okay, now this is the profile that we're going to use in our molding tool path to create the top side of our dish. So that works out pretty good. So let's just go ahead and give this a shot to make sure everything is lined up right. So before we do that, let's get rid of these um, these guidelines. We don't need those anymore. Let's flip over to our toolpath tab for a second. And let's just go ahead and grab the molding toolpath. It's going to ask us to check our material out here. So we're going to go ahead and select this inside vector and we'll hold down our shift key and get this guy. So that's perfect. So you can see that our vectors work out pretty nicely. It fits with inside of our actual... Um, project that we need here. It looks really good. Uh, we're going to use a ball nose end mill. It's a quarter inch ball nose end mill. We are going to use a clearance tool, which is going to be a quarter inch clearance tool for this molding tool path. Um, we're not going to use any machining allowance. Um, we're going to let it go ahead. Or we're going to use a boundary offset of a quarter inch, which is great. And we're just going to go ahead and calculate that and see what we get. If you have a look at this, we can go ahead and preview that. Now you'll notice that it is upside down. So that was the clearance tool. And then we're going to go in with our finishing tool in the end. Now it's inside out. It's the wrong way around. So how can we fix that? So let's go ahead and undo that. Let's close that down. Let's go back to our 2D view for a second. Now what we're going to do is we're simply just going to go ahead and in here, inside of our molding tool path, we're just going to go ahead and right click on this reverse direction. And let's calculate that. Now we should have the inside bowl now this time around. Let's preview that toolpath and see what we get. It's exactly what I want for the, well, kind of for what I want for the inside of the dish. I need to get rid of this big lump in the middle, but that's not so hard to do in the end. Okay, great. So let's just go ahead and delete these first two that we had. We don't need those anymore. Close this down. Now let's think about that lump in the middle and how it's going, how we can get rid of that. So let's go ahead back over to our drawing tab here. So we know that this lump is is inside of this circle here and seeing as i in my molding tool path i used an automatic offset of a quarter inch then the lump is actually a quarter inch smaller than this so if i went and just did a straight up pocket tool path which would work um, then i would be doing some air cutting outside of this so i really don't want to do that but we can fix that in the actual tool path for a pocket tool path so let's just go ahead and press um, f on our keyboard to make sure we fill the screen with that let's go back over to our our toolpath tab. We're going to add in a pocket toolpath. Okay. With that vector selected, we're going to go down a cut depth of whatever the depth was we chose our pie plate to be, which in this case will be 1.18. Okay. Uh, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill, which is great. And we are going to make sure that we go ahead and use a pocket allowance here. Okay. So we want to make this actually smaller than what it is. So we're going to put in point to five of an inch okay and we're just going to go ahead and calculate that and we'll go ahead and we'll preview that visible tool path and we'll see now that we're cleaning out the inside of that hopefully it'll line up flat with the bottom of the dish oh, perfect looks really good so that's the inside of our dish i'm really quite happy with that i think that looks like a pie plate once we run a profile tool path around that depending on what side we choose we can actually cut this out um, but we need a backside. So let's go ahead now and close this down. Let's flip back over to our 
uh, drawing tab here and we are going to tile our views left and right so we can take a look at this. So we have already a um, the inside of this, but what we need to know is before we start to think about the underside of our of our pie plate, how thick the wall thickness is going to be for our pie plate. So the best way to do that is to grab this vector and we are going to go ahead and offset that. So we need to offset it out some number that makes sense for the wall thickness of this pie plate. And for me, I think what I want to do is I want to make it um, as thick as the all the way on the outside as, as it is from the inside of the bottom of my pie plate to the underside. So the, the thickness of the bottom of my pie plate. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to put in Z and I'm, that's that material thickness. And I'm going to subtract from that the thickness of our pie dish, which is going to be 1.18. I'm going to press equals. Oh, sorry. It wasn't typing in the right spot. 1.18. And we can go ahead and press equals on my keyboard. And that's what I'm going to offset that outward. So let's just go ahead and offset that out. And we'll close that down. Now, there we have it. That is going to be the actual wall thickness of my plate. So we're going to go ahead and drop in a guideline there. And we're going to select these two vectors over these two boxes that we have. And we're just going to go ahead and pull those out so they line up with that and let go. Okay. So I had that on my control key by mistake. So I now have a copy of those. So let's go ahead and delete out those ones I don't need anymore. Ah. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So this is going to be the outside of my pie plate. Now, that's great. So let's just go ahead and let's think about how we would like to draw that. Well, we really can't tell for sure how this is going to look. So let's just go ahead and do a little bit of work down here at the bottom. Let's copy and paste that and use our cursor keys. We're going to nudge that down and we're going to go ahead and remove this line right there. We don't need that for this particular little, this little um, part of my, my problem I need to try and fix. So we're going to take this here and we're going to press T on the keyboard and we're going to thicken this box up only up and down or the thickness of it to equal the thickness of my material. I don't remember what that is because all I do is remember is the, the 40 millimeters. So let's do what we did before and we'll times that by I and we'll go equals and we'll hit apply. It's great. Close. And what I can do is I can just go ahead. Actually, I'll show you a little tip to do this. Let's do that again. Let's go into T. But what I actually want to do is I want to scale it. The anchor point is going to be up here in the corner. So if I go ahead and press do the same thing again, 40 times I equals hit apply. You'll see that it only stretches it down. So that's great. Now I can start to think about the actual um, what I want the underside of this bowl to look like. So let's close this for a sec. And let's have a little think. Um, we want it to kind of come down like so. Actually, what I want to do, this is important too, uh, to show you that I really um, want to make sure that I have a bit of a thickness at the top here. So we're going to go ahead and copy this down here again. Hold down my alt key and we'll just drop that in there and the control key. Pop that in there. So really what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is actually going to be just, just straight. This is the, the shape here I'm really going to be worrying about here. So let's just go ahead and go like this. And then we'll go somewhere around here. And we'll just kind of pull it in. Now what we're going to do press escape. We're going to pull in some guidelines just so we can line that all up to where it needs to be. So we got the outside one, which is fine. Okay. We're going to come in to here and that's going to be the inside bottom. Great. So let's just go into node mode. Let's just bring this guy over here. We're going to bezier this. So hover over that. We're going to turn that into a curve. Oops. I'm going to grab those guys there and we'll just kind of pull those down. Okay. And that's kind of what I want the outside of my pie dish to look like. Something like that. Now you can mess around with this. You can have it look whatever you like, like whatever you want it to look like. But that's the way I want mine to look. Now, why did I leave that space there? You might be thinking, well, it's really important for me because I need to add uh, a little bit of room for some tabs. And so because the molding toolpath works from the surface of my material, the way I'm using it anyway, and works its way down, I kind of felt that that gap would be enough space to put tabs and also look quite nice when the dish fits up inside of my lid. So that's why I chose to do that. And I think that was a pretty good decision. There's all kinds of different ways you can do that. Just go back in the node mode for a sec. Let's just kind of tweak that a bit. That's better. Okay. Now 
let's see what this is going to look like in the end. So for right now, we're going to drag in a guideline and we're going to delete out my boxes. Oop. We'll leave that one in there. We're going to grab these two vectors here. Actually, we're just going to grab one for right now. And we're going to go into node mode or go to line drawing mode. Hold down my control key. When I hold down my control key and I click on the end of an open line, it connects it to the end of that. So that's good. That's perfect. That's what I want. Excellent. And then I want to go in, do the same thing again, into the line, draw a line here, hold down my control key, and I'm going to click on the end of this line and bring it to the center. Okay. Space bar, hold down my control key again, and we're going to do the same for the inside of the pie plate to there. Let's press escape this time, and we can just go ahead and delete that box out of there. And now you're going to see that this is one half of my pie plate. If we took it and we cut it right down the center, this would be the wall thickness. Let's right click on those. We're going to join. Uh, we're going to move our endpoints. So in here I've got overlapping just slightly wrong. So let's just bring that in. This is just for visualization, by the way. So we're never going to use this thing I'm drawing down here. This here as well. We're going to go ahead and right click and we are going to join those, uh, move our endpoints. Let's go and, and copy that across the, the our job by holding down Control, Shift, and H. And there we have it. And if we go ahead and choose both of those, we can go ahead and join those, move our endpoints, make sure it's joined together. That's great. And that's what the our pie plate is going to look like when we go ahead and we build it. And I think that looks really good. It looks nice and thick, looks sturdy. Might be a little thick on the outside, but I think that's pretty decent. So that's good. Now. We need to go ahead and build the other side of this um, this pie plate. So we're going to take all of these circle vectors along with um, this guy here. Hold down our shift key. And we're going to right click and we're going to copy to the other side. And let's flip to the other side of our job. Okay, and there it is right there. So we're just going to go ahead and move it down here to the bottom. I don't know why I like to work at the bottom, but I do. And now we need to go ahead and, and take this apart again because I've gone ahead and, and assembled it all or put it all together. So we're going to cut it here by holding C on my keyboard. We're going to cut it here by pressing key on C on my keyboard. Let's just delete that extra bit out of there. And there is our cross section. Okay. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing on this side with the molding toolpath. So let's go ahead and flip over to our toolpath tab. Oh, we need to mold it. Now we're going to go ahead and select those two vectors, this guy here and this guy there. Okay, and we'll see what happens. Now we're gonna just sort of preview this in their 3D view to make sure we have, we've got it the right way around, unlike we did last time around. So let's calculate that. Let's have a look at that. So it's inside out, so that's not what we want. So let's just go ahead and fix that before we go ahead and, and bother doing this. Right click on this, let's just go ahead and reverse direction. Let's calculate that now. And let's go ahead and preview our visible toolpath. So there we have it, did the clearance first, and then it went ahead and did the outline. Now there we have it. So look at that. We've got a bottom and a top of a pie plate. Now we just need to go ahead and cut this out so we can be sure that everything lines up the way that it should. So what we're going to we're going to do that by flipping to the other side because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do it from this side really um, because of the way it's set up. It's quite deep. Um, and this is a, a weird shape to try and add tabs to. So it's best if we do it from the other side. Let's go to the other side. And we're going to create a new toolpath now using this outside vector. Close that down. It's going to be a very simple sort of um, profile. We're going to go through the material. Um, actually, we're not going to go through all the way through the material because if we did that, then our bowl would literally fall out when we cut the other side. So we only want to go down that difference of the material. Remember we set up that that wall here, right here. We only want to go down that distance, so that's fine. We're going to go with Z, which is the, our material thickness. We're going to subtract from that um, the 1.18 and we'll hit equals. That's as far as we want to go down. Use a quarter inch and now we're going to cut outside that line. We're going to need to add in some pretty beefy tabs for this so we don't want it to fall out. So let's edit our tabs. Let's go ahead and put in four tabs and we'll go ahead and add those tabs. You see they're added over here in our 2D view. Let's close that down. That all looks good. So let's just go ahead and we'll calculate that. And then we'll preview that visible toolpath and we'll see what we get. And look at that. Now those tabs are pretty small, so we're going to need to make them bigger in the end. But you know what? Just for just for our our benefit here, what I'm going to want to do is actually not show those tabs and we'll go ahead and calculate that. 
and we'll go ahead and we'll preview that visible toolpath and that's going to cut those tool those tabs out of there which is fine because i just want to see what my plate is going to look like in the end using those two molding toolpaths now i think that's pretty slick i'm really happy with that if everything cuts like it should it should be great I might want to go ahead and I probably will go ahead and um, slide around these tool paths a bit so I'm not doing as many um, tool changes um, in weird times that I need to do but we'll think about that when it actually comes around to cutting the real proper job so now let's go ahead and take a look at the file that I'm going to give you to cut your own pumpkin pie dish with so as always, when you open up the file that we give you with any of our free projects, we've got our little disclaimer here. Make sure you uh, read and understand this. And before you cut any of the tool paths in this job, make sure they're safe and appropriate for the material you have, the tools you have on hand, and your CNC machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Now, as you can see, this looks remarkably like what we just saw a minute ago or what I built for you from scratch. We've got our bitmap all loaded in here. I've made some notes here for myself off to the side in this file just because I had a hard time sort of seeing oh, the numbers on my little tiny laptop I was using. So it just kind of made sense that I could go ahead and put them there for my own personal reference. If we take a look at the actual um, layers here you'll see that i've cleaned them up a little bit as you know when you bring in a bitmap file or you import in a bitmap file it creates a, a new layer called bitmap well i moved it to the pie plate layer okay so we've got uh, all kinds of different layers here to to look at so if i go ahead and look at my layers over here we can turn them on and off a little bit easier so we have the top of my plate and you'll see that when i turn that on that's where my pumpkin top is so if we go ahead and tile our views you see that there is that 3d component for the pumpkin top and some tabs in there so if we look at our modeling tab here you'll see that we have on level one is the actual 3d component here of that pumpkin and then we have on another um, level that's been merged in all of our four tabs and i lined them up so they're easy to access places on that so that's good let's go back to our layers again we have our molding profiles which you saw me draw uh, in that last part of the demo here's the top side of the dish uh, molding or the uh, profile and here is you can see the vectors through from the other side but there is the outside um, or the bottom side profile that I use for this for this one so we can go ahead now and take a look at the if we scroll down a little bit you'll see that I did exactly the same thing for myself those are the two uh, profiles that we're going to use inside of a rectangle that represents the material thickness and then when i go ahead and stick those together you'll see that i could then be pretty sure as long as i set up my tooling properly that my end wall thickness or my end plate thickness if i cut it right through the middle would look remarkably like that so i can select that vector and press v on my keyboard and flip it over if i want to but my pie will nestle nicely inside of that dish that looks really good we also have holes here for our dowels because it's a double-sided job we're going to need those and you can see here that i've used this outside vector copied it over to the underside of my pumpkin lid that's how i knew what size i needed the top to be i needed to make sure that i could pocket out a space for the edge of that um this vector here the edge of the pie plate that might fit up inside because i wasn't sure about the little rolly edge how thick that was going to be and then i have another vector here so i could pocket out as much as I could from the underside of this lid just in case my pie happened to get a little fluffy on top I might we need a little extra headroom in there for it okay so that's all I have for vectors and like I said you saw me do the lion's share of that in that uh, the, the demo to start out with but really this is a matter of just doing some importing in of some 3d components using free tabs that I got with my software and you get with your software as well and just make sure I set that up properly so really you can use um, this job for any of those other um, pie tops that you saw the Apple pie or the berry pie just by bringing in that pie lid sizing it up properly make sure it fits inside of your material thickness merging it in properly then you can go ahead and use any of those if you'd like to it's really that easy so let's have a look at our tooling let's pop over there for a second now as i said um, i did go ahead and rearrange my tooling to make it efficient for me to do tool changes so the first thing we do is i've got all of my quarter inch end mill tool pads at the top i've got my ball nose tool paths two of them here and then i have the last uh, tool change i need to do for the top which is to go ahead and cut those dowel holes now i could go ahead and slide that uh, the dowel holes tool path up my uh, my list here but i, I didn't think it was going to help me any because i when i went to uh, take this material off my machine and cut those dowel holes into my 
a waste board, I'd still need to do a tool chain. So I thought maybe I'd just do it at the end to save me a little bit of time. Don't know if it saved me time or not, but it needed to be done anyway. So I just picked the time that felt good. So let's go ahead and take a look at these one at a time. So let's go ahead in our tool paths uh, preview here. Let's go ahead and maximize this. You'll see that we have the um, the clearance tool path for our uh, molding tool path for the inside of our dish. We've got that center pocket that I showed you um, uh, the how to do. So cut that down through there. We've got our roughing pass for our 3D component isolated to a, a vector, an outline vector. And you can see there's the tabs there as well. Uh, I have my profile, so I'm gonna cut down through that. You saw me do that before. I did beef up my tabs a bit, so these are much better and gonna hold it securely in place. Um, and then we can go ahead and look at the um, the first bull nose toolpath. So, so I would have changed my tool by now. Let's preview that visible toolpath. That'll round out the inside edge of that. We can go ahead and take a look at our 3D finishing. Now I just used a big quarter inch bull nose for that finishing, but it looks really nice uh, that uh, the way this was modeled, CNC ready clip art, it looks really good in the end. So I'm really quite happy with that. And then we can go ahead and preview our dowel holes. That looks great. So once those are all done cutting in my virtual world right now, in my head, I'm gonna go ahead and take that material off my machine, flip it over, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, the, I'm not going to, I'm going to flip it over, but I'm going to put it aside. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my dowel holes into my waste board. So this tool path is, put my dowels in there, flip over my part, put it back on top of those dowels, screw it back down again. And then I can go ahead and again, I've, I've sort of resorted these out so that all of my end mill tool paths are at the top. So we've got a um, edge cutout. So this is where that little lip, um, the extra lip under on the underside of my lid in case that uh, aluminum uh, folded over part of my pie plate is a little too thick. I've given myself a little bit of wiggle room in there. So we can just look at that. I've got a that's the same tool path. I've got the center pocket. So I've gone down as pretty much as far as I can go before my relief will actually start to show through. they will actually cut through because this is so low. That's as deep as I could go without having too much trouble at all. Okay, then what I can do is we can run the cutout for that. That's pretty easy, just a profile tool path. You can see there's a bit of an onion skin left behind. That's totally because of the cusping of my ball nose in the top. I didn't mind that being there. It wasn't particularly useful for me not to have it there, mainly because I needed to sound all the edges anyway. So then that's really quite thin. So it just ended up breaking out in the end and I could sand off the whatever was left, which I plan on doing anyway. Here is my uh, clearance tool path. Okay, so we'll preview that for the underside of my bowl. And you'll see that all I have holding this in place when I do uh, my finishing uh, or, or my final finishing bit for my molding tool path is just those tabs. I really needed to make sure those were nice and hearty tabs. So we can go ahead and preview that visible tool path. And there we have it. That is it. Once we get that all cut up, that's great. So I'm gonna cut the top side, take it off, dowel holes in my wasteboard, Put this back on again. I'm gonna cut all of this. And then what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut out the bottom of this dish. Make sure that it fits inside of this recess that I built here. And if not, then I can go ahead at that point and make this just a little bit wider so I can get that pie plate to fit or the pie dish to fit on the underside of that pumpkin top. Okay, think that we have everything that we need to go ahead and cut this. So let's go ahead and pop over to the labs and get it started.
So there we have it, all the front or top side tool paths are done. I'm really happy with them all. Um, the molding tool path worked really nicely on the inside of the top of the pie plate. Uh, you probably could have done that with a V-bit if you wanted to, but uh, the molding tool path is, is always nice to use for that. And I knew it was gonna work without any hassle. So that's really nice. I think while it's still attached to the machine, I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding. There's some fuzzies on the top of the uh, pumpkin top that I wanna get rid of. Um, and then also I've, we've got the dowel holes all cut here for the flipping. So always test fit your dowels and they seem to fit perfectly. So, uh, so that's great. So once I get this sanded down a little bit, I'm gonna take this off, put the dowel holes into the waste board, put the dowels in and flip the part over and then we'll cut all the back tool paths and uh, then we're gonna see what we get. Okay, so we're all done. We cut out the bottom of the bowl or the actual the pie plate part and we're gonna test fit it into the lid. It should fit, if it doesn't fit, because this is still on the machine, I can go ahead and make the hole just a little bit bigger or maybe I'll go and sand down the edge of this a little bit more. It just depends on how tight it is. So yeah, so it's a really tight fit. I can tell that it's really super tight. So I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna change out the bit again, put the end mill in, do a quick profile around the outside of that, just make it a little bit wider, and then this will fit in perfect. That, that was a lot of fun to make. I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, I could see this traveling to, uh, to meals all, all this autumn season um, with all kinds of great things inside, whether it be a pumpkin pie, a lemon pie, or even an apple pie. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. In the meantime, I hope you have a happy autumn and I'm gonna go eat a pie.